Hello, my name is Emer Atkinson and I'm a second year student of Fine Art at Ulster University. In my tour, I will be discussing the theme of the cult of the West of Ireland in Gerard Dillon's Inish Latin Couple. The West of Ireland makes up 20% of the state and is rich with hundreds of years of history, literacy and art. Gerard Dillon spent much of his time around the West of Ireland visiting the uncolonised and authentic Irish soil. The idea of this was something that fascinated Dillon. Dylan himself was born and raised in 1916 to a working class family in West Belfast, but was left to travel to London at age 14 to become an apprentice house decorator and painter. The West was a mystical place to Dylan, who was brought up in a predominantly urban environment during the World War. The West was his escapism. His attraction to the West was colonialism, an Ireland not ruled by British rule. By 1936, he began to paint and visit Connemara frequently. He travelled between London and the West a lot of the time, selling his work in London and Dublin to make money to travel back to the West. As a gay, working-class artist, Dylan had the obvious sense of belonging there. From as early as the 15th century, landscape and portraiture had become a standard commission for Irish artists. Many artists, such as Daniel McAleese, relocated to London after the famine had occurred in Ireland which predominantly affected many people in the west of Ireland. The development of Irish fine art had not been a smooth one. After the 1940s followed the post-war and political turmoil throughout the country. It wasn't until the 1960s that Ireland began to regain confidence as a nation, regaining its own identity. Artists then sought to develop a uniquely Irish style of painting and thus the push towards modernism occurred. A new alignment of experiences with modern life, various social and political agendas acted as a starting point for many artists across Ireland. New themes and ways of creating art produced the rejection of history and conservative values, something that Dylan definitely gained inspiration from, clearly showing in his work which uses a variety of techniques and themes inspired from his time in the west of Ireland. Menin Gillette is noted as one woman who was the driving force behind modernism in Ireland. Her strong, energetic paintings reflect herself as a character. Gillette was quite good friends with Dylan and helped him open his first show in Dublin. Modernism is not only seen in Dylan's work, but in the works of artist Jane Keaton. His painting, Men of the West, reflects the westernised West of Ireland and was promoted by de Valera within the Irish Republic, as the painting ties in with Easter Rising and was painted pre-partition. The painting illustrates three men holding guns, dressed in iron clothing, yet bear resemblance to the cowboy of the Americans' Wild West. Keating depicts himself on the far left, pictured, standing beside the Irish tricolour, portraying himself in the role of the idealist. Clearly reflecting his own national standpoint through his art and the activism within it. Reflecting the artist's pride but also perceived need for revolution through violence. He was one of few artists who dealt with the complex social and political upheavals of the early years of the Irish New State. Keating, who was greatly inspired by his trip to the Iron Islands in 1913-14, while visiting his friend Harry Clark. The painting Goodbye Father depicts a scene of a priest leaving the island of Inishir, the smallest of the Iron Islands. A contrast between the beauty of the landscape and the primitive lives of islanders fascinated Keating, unaffected by such political turmoil going on within the mainland of Ireland, similar to Dylan, who was greatly inspired by the people and their simplistic way of life. In 1927, Keating illustrated Syange's Playboy of the Western World. He identified with the realism and poetry he found within the work. Likewise, this legacy of the West was what interested Dylan. The Playboy of the West was set in the west coast of Ireland in Jane Flaherty's public house in County Mayo during the early 1900s. The play was performed in Dublin in 1907, a few years before Dylan was born. The play follows the story of a young man, Christy Mahone, running away from his farm, believing to have killed his father. I believe that the setting of the Irish landscape and the idea that Christy was treated so kindly by the people of the West may have been something that Dylan possibly related to. As Christy had come from such a distant land, like Dylan, he too was welcomed within the community, so much so he made it his second home. Many of Dylan's pieces are inspired by the artists around him and the primitive ways of the West of Ireland, including the painting before you. Dylan spent an entire year of his life on the island of Inishlagan, off the coast of Connemara, 
relating to Katie's own ventures to the Aran Islands and sharing similar interests in their subject of work. One of Dylan's interests was the Irish landscape and the idea of the West of Ireland was always quite prominent within Irish art. Artists such as Paul Henry, an earlier artist than Dylan, was extremely well known for his depictions of the West of Ireland in his post-impressionist style, but was also a great influence on Dylan. The painting Dawn of Killarney Harbour, created in 1921, depicts landscape overlooking the dawning of the day through the head of the valley, reflecting upon the natural and pure Irish landscape. Henry mainly painted the landscape and what the West of Ireland looked like but communalised, mainly taking people out of the landscape, whereas the people of the West were Dylan's main subject interest. Ireland's people shows the difference in their work, with Dylan's inclusion of figures within his landscape pieces. Evidentially, Dylan's main focus was portraiture and the people of West and their ways of living. Looking at the painting displayed, alongside the traditional Irish symbolism displayed upon the mantle reflecting Dylan's Catholic upbringing, you can see through the depiction of the couple in the painting are presented through their closed off body language, possibly presenting the view from his own childhood of his parents. Following a used technique of Dylan's, many of his characters have green toned skin, presenting them quite alien like with uncommon colour choices for their skin tones. This technique was often used within Dylan's work and the simplicity of the painting itself reflects the primitive culture of the West at its time. But also reinforcing the segregation of the island of Inishlagan, which resulted in the more primitive livelihoods of these people and had in comparison to those in the urbanised areas where Dylan was from. Something quite obscene to Dylan, who was from the city. Undoubtedly, Dylan was an astonishing painter, taking inspiration from his companions and painters before him. His art often used a tilted perspective with a surreal and magic of force, taking inspiration from his muse, the West of Ireland. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour and you will be inspired to take the other tours delivered by my fellow students.